Hey guys, welcome, welcome. I know it's not Monday, but you know, our podcast is called Money Mondays and I'm your host, Kalisha Carter, and I have my gorgeous co-host, Betsy. Hey everyone, everyone. I'm so happy wow. to be here. Um, before we start, we do have a disclaimer. We always have to say our disclaimer, so here it goes. <laughs> following information is for educational purposes only please do your own diligence we do not provide financial legal or professional advice everything that we talk about is our experience and we can help you with our experience but you know we're not certified in every, anything exactly. please seek your cpas for legal advice and attorneys, and attorneys yeah uh, for everyone that is new here, Money Mondays, we just talk about everything as it relates to using private capital to acquire real estate, to acquire businesses. We just talk about everything creative. Yes. And occasionally we bring guests on to amazing guests, great guests, what they're doing to grow their rental portfolio or businesses using other people's money. Because a lot of persons always hear about, um, OPM and they're like what does that mean but OPM means other people's money or sometimes private capital um, before we bring on our amazing guests guys don't forget to like this video to subscribe to our channel and let us know what you guys think about this episode this guest how do I introduce, even introduce this guest <laughs> Christian Hernandez Oh my God, we're all a part of the same mastermind group, um, sub two with Pace Morby, the three of us. And um, Christian has been, oh my God, his strategy is fantastic. He literally uses, what's it again? Uh, wait, foreclosures. He focused on getting lists from pre foreclosures and he's been a genius with getting those leads. And then, guys, what he does with his exits, it's phenomenal what he does with that. Sometimes he keeps them, sometimes he sells them. We don't know, but he's going to drop all the gems and tell us what he's doing. So welcome, guys. Uh, Christian Hernandez. Hey, ladies. How are you guys doing? Good. Good, good. The famous Christian Hernandez is here on Money Mondays. How are you feeling today? I feel good. I'm like, I'm excited you guys invited me. You know, so no, thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah. This is like a pretty chill, laid back. Uh, we're just chatting just as if we should be on the phone and we're just talking and just sharing our experience. Um, for persons who don't know who you are, just tell us who's Christian Hernandez. Yeah, um I'm I'm a, I'm a wholesaler mainly, right? I still look at myself as a wholesaler, meaning like my main my main focus is to look for these wholesale leads, right? And what ends up happening when you're when you're looking for cash deals is that you stumble up upon sub twos along the way, right? <laughs> so I'm really looking for cash deals, and that's like how I feel my business, right? I like the the big chunks of cash, and then and then as I'm going, I'm 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 picking up you know, one or two, three properties every month on creative financing, you know, but it's not necessarily like I'm going, I'm looking for these properties, I'm looking for cash. And if it does not fit cash, then I, I go down this other alley and I, I try to keep them or I try to wrap them and that, and that sort of thing. So what would you say is like your main acquisition strategy? You said the exit strategy is like keeping them or, or wrapping them. So you know, a lot of people want when it comes to doing this business, they want to go ahead and pull the biggest list, and they want to just like spend all this money on data, and that and that works for some people, right? For me, when I was doing that, it was not working at all, and really, well, I was getting a little bit of deals, and what I realized after, let's say, let's say I get six deals, and four of them were out of the for, pre foreclosure list. Right. So then I, I saw that and I was like, well, why am I messing around with these other lists? Yeah. And and I switched into only calling the pre-foreclosure data, although it wasn't like the most data or it wasn't a lot of data. I would just 
bombard this data every day into the gap for closed on or something along those lines. And that's how that's how I generated business. That's how I found my leads. So just to give you guys like a ballpark on the numbers of how much data I'm getting and versus how many contracts it turns into, yeah. you know, um, about two months ago is the we we bought about 700 records right for the foreclosure data right these were all properties that were just going to go to auction within a month and that's it was 700 leads that we bought and out of the 700 we ended up contracting seven of them so wow. so where so I, this is a two-part question that i have which market uh were you targeting for those 700 leads and um like where did you get those leads as well so I get a lot of my lead my my list from the county, right? I have a VA scout the county and collect it where where I can. That's the always the freshest data. Yeah. And then the ones I can't get that way, I like to use PropStream or Property Radar, just because they have filters on when the auction is happening. And I only like to target people that are like a month with, a month away from the auction. So I basically that, those are just the filters I use get out a month away from the auction and then I start targeting it. And I like to target all the, you know, the bigger cities, the metros, like they call them, right? I like to target Houston, Dallas, El Paso, San Antonio. I like to target Atlanta. Um, all mm -hmm. of them. Um, I got some in Phoenix last month. I got some in Las Vegas last month. Um, it's the same exact strategy when you're approaching it this way, you know, you just stop and I kind of got it down as far as the lead generation process, you know, what I see, and I'll tell you, this is what we do. Our main strategy is texting, right? We send out a text message to them and start the conversation up. Yeah. But if you think that you're going to text yourself to a contract, you're going to lose a lot of contracts to people like me that get on the phone as fast as they can. Mm -hmm. So we try to start the fire up with the text, but then we call them as soon as we can. And that's, those have been the best deals. So how do you determine when you call them? Do they have to respond first or you send them a multiple text and if they don't respond, then you're like the next step is to call them. Okay. So I call them once they're responding, once they're going back and forth a little bit. Yeah. If they're not going back and forth, I'm not calling them. What I'll do is I will put them on a different campaign with a different text that looks a little bit different and I'll try them again. You know, one of the things with the foreclosure leads is that they're going through they're going through like the grieving stages, right? Mm -hmm. So in the beginning of it, when you get a hold of them, they might tell you, "Hey man, get out of my house, get out of my house, get out of my face, stop texting me, you're this, you're that," right? But it's a lot of times it's just because they're still in that denial phase, they're they're in that anger phase, right? They just over here, they're not really accepting that, hey, look, I really need to sell my house. Yeah. So even when I get these type of responses, I don't necessarily get discouraged and I don't necessarily stop trying to reach out to these people just because I know that, you know, they're down the line. And, and this is something I, I, I actually have a lot of proof of where I'm texting in at the beginning of, of the month and they're telling me, look, I want 400, I want market value mm -hmm. and I want to stay in the house for a month after. Yeah. And then you get closer and they're like, okay, um, I don't want market value. I want this, but I want to stay in a month long, you know, in the house longer. And then you keep on going. And then now it's two weeks away and they're like, hey, look, I'll sell it for this, but I need to stay one for one month. And really they start to come down on their ask as you're going through it, as they start accepting the reality that, look, maybe I don't have enough time to sell it at market value. I don't have enough time to list it and I need to do something before, you know, I lose everything. So, Man. is there like um, a sweet spot where? So I'm assuming in these cases you analyze your numbers first. You know what your what the price point is that you need to go into. For cases where these sellers want money, how do you determine how much money to give them and stuff like that to make the deal work? Um, well, for for example, I like to be on there about eight percent about all the money that I'm I can put out. Mm -hmm. That's the most, that's the most I'm willing to do, 8%. So right? is it 8% of the ARV? No, uh, yeah, yeah, 8% of the ARV, okay. right? So my first stage is always to, I, I don't do any research on the house 
um, except for maybe ballpark how much they owe, right? It's it's on PropStream, so if I see, okay, this is cash and they have equity, or they this is not cash, they don't have equity, right? And now the the ones that you're probably asking for is like the the creative deals. So I start getting, and the key with create um, well, foreclosures is that they're messy. There's a lot of stuff that that they might have on title still that you might have to you know fix the problem you know they may have other liens they might have child support liens they may have um that sort of stuff so the first thing is to ask those type of questions right how much they owe how much they're in arrears you know how much they would want in their pocket that sort of thing yeah okay so eight percent so eight percent of arv so that's good um and then I know like some person be like, okay, I need to do 8% of ARV. That means I need to figure out where am I getting the money from first before I even lock up the deal. I think that's a fear of a lot of persons. They're scared of getting a deal on the contract because they start worrying about the money. How do you, how do, would you approach that? I actually do it the other way. I lock up the deal. Okay. Because if it's, if it's a good deal, I can still assign it. I can still, you know, partner with somebody or, you know, I can make something happen with it if it's a good deal, if it's truly a good deal. Yeah. So I'm not going to wait because by the time you wait, somebody along like me comes along and says, hey, sign it, sign it right here. I'm ready. <laughs> right. So, so um, what, would, what would you recommend our viewers to do? Uh, the first thing is to always be asking for private money, always be having that conversation with everybody. Mm -hmm. right not just when you have a deal mm -hmm. not when you found a deal always that way when you do get a deal you're like okay well i talked to these 10 people boom let me talk to them first you mm -hmm. know but i think what what i see the most the biggest mistake is that they get the deal they like there's there's zero conversation about private money there's zero conversations about lending they think they have a family member that has a lot of money that might be able to help them out and they're going to ask them once they find the deal. But first, they're going to find the deal, right? That's what I, I hear all the time where they know somebody. and then But they never even, like, poked the bear. They never even had the conversation and said, hey, what if I did this? They're just hoping, like, and then they get the deal. And then they go poke and they're, they're like, no, absolutely not. And now you're, locked, now you're like, in trouble. And now you're like, oh, what that was I my do? plan. Yeah, well, what do I do? <laughs> No, you're right. I think one thing we've learned um, is when it comes down to raising money is that you always have to be raising capital, whether you have the deal or not, and just telling persons what you're doing as well. Um, well, kind of like, it's like planting the seeds. So like, hey, I'm doing this, but if this opportunity comes, mm -hmm. uh, would you be interested? Mm -hmm. So as you said, at least when you get the deal, now you know who to go to. Um, when you have the deal to be like, hey, I know you mentioned you'll be interested. I have something here at the end part. Yeah, and we also we also call it like getting loud on social media because we oh. we, we do do that a lot. And you do that too, Christian. I, I follow you on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> I, t I tell him all the time. He's like, I'm not posting on my feed. I was like, dude, but you're always posting in your stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we know that you're you're doing stuff because he's posting his stories, he's posting the contracts that he's doing. So people see those things and they're like, okay, he's really doing shit. He's getting mm -hmm. stuff done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and you know, sometimes I feel like people not me, right? People think that that oh man, well how many posts are too many posts? Are my friends getting annoyed that every single day I'm doing this? But then I look at like really successful people like Pace and Vina, and I look okay, how many stories do they have? If I don't have as many as them, I should not be worried. And I look and they have 15. They have 15 for the day. They have 15 for the next day. So things like that, you know. I, I say, you know, I would just keep on doing it. I think that that is one of the easiest ways to, you know. Put basically yes, continuously okay. putting yourself out there, even when you're not necessarily like actively talking to them. But mm -hmm. they might 
I, I've definitely had people reach out to my of my social media telling me, hey, look, I see that you're doing this. I want to do something. I have thirty thousand dollars. If you have something, please reach out to me. You know, but it's only happening, like you said, because it's it's constant, right? People want to see consistency, and people want to see that that you're really doing business. So, so that's kind of like my focus when I'm posting this stuff. I kind of want to point out, like, look, I'm I'm doing business. That's the thing, guys. Most of our lenders we found on social media. Yeah, mm -hmm. most of them. Almost all of them. Yeah. On or referrals, like someone will see our stuff and then they start sending our stuff to somebody else. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, it's kind of cool. I always I I think it's still cool that I, I can post a deal on my 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 story and I can find a lender. Mm -hmm. Like I'm at that point where I could just post it thing and then my phone is I'm, I'm i have to be ready because my phone is gonna be like blowing up and it's gonna be like four people that want to talk right now and it's that's just, so that, powerful that deal he had the other day i don't remember where it was and he posted that he needed twenty thousand dollars um and he put his phone number and, and he's like call or text <laughs> and i reached out to someone who in our network that i knew had 20 and she's like, I'm ready. She's like, is this Christian's deal? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is amazing. And I think I really admire you putting your phone number out there. Um, and I also like Kevin Child, he does it as well. Isn't that scary? Because then you're thinking that you get overwhelmed with all these messages. Um, it, it, I'm overwhelmed. If I'm being <laughs> honest, I'm overwhelmed. Like I have 200 and something messages that are unread. All my messages, only text messages. So it definitely gets overwhelming. I do try to respond to everybody. And that's why we, even when I post that, right, I have to be like, okay, I'm, I have to be ready to get on the phone, right? Like if I post, I cannot post this and yeah. go into like a doctor's appointment and not be on the phone. You know, like is it, this is going to basically open the floodgates. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean... The thing, the thing too, you know, I want to make myself accessible. Mm -hmm. um, for me, a lot of the, a lot of my business is also on JV, right? A lot of my deals, I, I do, I do JV. So people call me all the time with leads, with, with, with lead to close, with, with contracts to sell, with private money. So I, I'm the opposite, right? I want everybody to know, like, I want it to be the easiest way to find me. I don't, I'm not one of those guys that needs to be secret. No, 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 you. You should be able to find me. If you try, you'll be able to find me. It's it's like you're talking and I'm like, hmm. Because my phone is always on do not disturb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's super helpful because I think that way it helps me to filter mm -hmm. my phone calls and my text messages. And at the same time, if I'm like doing a task that I really need to complete, that way I can be laser focused. Mm -hmm. um, for someone, what advice would you give someone who is may feel overwhelmed but at the same time still be a little accessible like how do you how can they find that balance or have you found that balance and what have you done to find that balance? i have not found that balance i'm still <laughs> overwhelmed and what really what, what i've done so far just to just to you know fix some of this really i i personally i i hired a tc full-time for for my business yeah. And that's just so that mm -hmm. I can I can start delegating a lot of the tasks that I, I don't need to be a part of and stuff like that. So that's that's what I'm really working on myself at this point is just kind of delegating some of the tasks that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't found a way to, like, pull myself out of, you know, being on all these calls yet. But at least that main thing that you got, which is a TC, because a lot of your day to day is going to be paperwork. Mm -hmm. The fact that you found someone to do that, that's like. That's yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Kalisha and me actually were talking about this right before. <laughs> oh, yeah. The yep. it's, it's a lot. It's mm -hmm. a lot. And also, it's a, the, I think for, for what I, for, for the foreclosures, it's, it's got to be like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I have somebody that I'm hiring and they tell me, okay, yeah, we'll call the seller tomorrow, that doesn't work for me. I need so you somebody. Have, you like, have a team? Um, I, I have a TC and I have a few a bunch of VAs, but I don't have anything else local here. Um, You're closing your own deals. I am closing my own deals. Man, we what would you what do you need if help with right now? That help with, from a VA. 
you know, one of the things I actually, I actually just implemented this. I'm, I'm still training the guy, mm -hmm. but um, I brought somebody in, in to help me comp and to help me dispo. Mm -hmm. So he's like still in process and then I'm still, because that's another thing that's like pulling me, right, on, on a mm -hmm. different direction. And yeah. it's the same thing, right? Like the, oh, I, I could tell you guys something I did to manage this cause actually. Um, I don't know if you guys do use go high level or something like that, but mm -hmm. the way I do it a lot of times, right? If I have a specific deal or if I have like a specific um, other type of marketing, yeah. I make sure that I put it, I, I put it that it's going to show that number when they call me and then I save that number as that deal or that situation. So I know that if they're calling me out of my investor lift, I see here, oh, this is this is a buyer that saw my number on investor lift. If they're calling me on a wrap deal that I have, I could see, oh, okay, this is that wrap buyer in Dallas. Oh, this is that wrap buyer in Aslo. So that is something I do that, okay, these calls are getting picked up over a strange, completely strange number that I've never seen before. So that's smart. That's, a, that's definitely a smart way to manage all your phone calls. Yeah. yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. Now, Let's dive into the money part. Tell us about a deal that you've done, a wrap deal, and how you use private money. You can get like maybe one of your most creative deals yet. Yeah, okay. like the creative ones. Uh, I well, I'll tell you guys what I did. I did the last one I did was like the easiest deal for me mm -hmm. that I've ever done because I didn't close it. I didn't. I didn't. I just bought mm -hmm. it. Some other wholesaler, some other wholesaler came to me and he said, "Hey, look, I got this. I need, I need at least six thousand dollars. The seller wants eight. We need to close quick. We need to close in 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 about seven days." I told them I would close in seven days, and I ha I don't know what to do. I I haven't been able to get the money. I I don't know what to do, and so that was like thirteen thousand dollars, right? Yeah. And and this was like on a time crunch. So uh, the way that I I structure this one is I partner with somebody. I, I said, hey, look, I I saw this deal. I know this guy. I know that that he'll give it to me at this price. Let me borrow the money, and then this one will do 50-50. So I'll go ahead and I'll grab this and I'll wrap it. Yeah. And you know, I bought the house from the guy. I closed the escrow on it, and I listed it on Facebook and Zillow and everything else. And I sold it as a wrap. I ended up getting about thirty thousand dollars down from the wrap buyer. So I pay the guy all his money back, right? He he let me borrow about fifteen thousand. I paid him all his money back, and then I had told him already that we split everything down the middle. Yeah. So he got seven on top of his money. I got seven, and right now we're still getting the note. The note payment for that one is about three hundred dollars. So you know, for the next thirty years or until somebody refinances out, you know, we're getting three hundred dollars every month. So for even all those technical people, like you like start worrying about all the paperwork. Um, with this, you have you have seven days to close. Mm -hmm. It will be. Did you create a new LLC or did you use your existing entity? Oh, okay. So when we closed on it, mm -hmm. we closed on it on both of our LLCs. So it was my LLC and his LLC. Yeah. And then when we and then during that time, we went ahead and created an LLC together. And then when we sold it on a wrap, that note that they created, they created it towards the LLC that we created. Mm, that is smart. That's that, smart, yeah. That's, that makes sense. Because a lot of persons will think that, okay, I don't have seven days isn't enough to go create a new entity. And I find what a lot of persons don't know is that you can actually close using two um, entities as well. Everyone always thinks it's just one. Think about it as it's a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. This is how you buy a house, a, house, a house with your husband or your wife, and both persons' name goes on the title. But both entities are husband and wife, man and man, whatever you want to call it. Um, both title, it goes on it. So I love that you brought up that paperwork part of it. That is pretty key. How yeah. long did it take you to pay your partner back? It was about two months. Two months that it took me to find the this rap buyer, and the key to that, you know, I had a, he had anticipated to hold the money for three months anyway, yeah. so it was within within the time frame. And when you do something like that, I think you know the most important thing is kind of communication. So if you get some movement on it, if some if 
if you know you get a contract and they're running their expense inspection or whatever it is i just like to call the lender and tell them hey you know that that, that flip that you let me borrow the money for i have an escrow on it they're gonna do their inspection they go hard on the tent so i'll let you know if, if it goes hard or not okay but we're looking good and i just like to keep on like letting them know what's up so that at least they feel comfortable about that they're gonna get their money yeah that is very insane yeah <laughs> and you mentioned something key too just now when you mentioned you had it took you about two months to find a rap buyer Mm -hmm. um i don't know if this is how you do but when i'm like thinking of buying something on a wrap and raising private capital for it we always allocate like set aside three months of holding costs all day long at least at least oh see you even do at least some persons when i tell them i do three months they're like why only do one month so i was like you never know what can happen yeah if you tell me that you're only doing one month i'm just gonna assume you haven't done enough wraps yeah yeah you know they they can say especially if you're trying to get good terms on it right like if you're gonna sell it to the first person that says yeah i got it mm -hmm. sure you'll find somebody quick but if you're like trying to get good terms on it with like a good interest rate so it's gonna make sense for you the long way it's gonna take some time yeah and it makes sense just if you need if your entry is fifteen thousand, always always like include the holding cost in the capital that you're raising if you mm -hmm. need to raise a little extra do it as well because we do that too never know what can happen we always have that little buffer and we still incorporate it in our numbers mm -hmm. so it makes sense is there a deal how you structured with a pml and when you made the agreement way after you're like damn i shouldn't have done it this way um no but i have a deal that kind of like broke my brain into like oh man you're doing this wrong <laughs> you <laughs> doing this wrong like you're playing the game completely wrong yeah. and what happened is i i helped uh, uh another student lock up a deal on it was like a va loan and we, we it was like no down payment to the seller right so it was one of those unicorn deals no down payment to the seller and and they, all we had to pay was the closing cost or the or either one of us could buy out the other one right mm -hmm. so if he had the money and he wanted to pay me my half he could if i had the money and i wanted to pay him his half he i could right so that was the agreement yeah. and um i at this point like this was like the i didn't i had not done anything with private money nothing right i just just wholesaling everything and and we end up finding a buyer right i end up finding a buyer and i sell the deal to the buyer and and then at the closing table i see how they got the money well this other guy that had been calling me and had been telling me that he wants to work with me and that he wants to do business with me had lent her the money. I knew the guy. I had the relationship with the guy. He had been telling me that he wanted to work with me, but I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to do anything with that. And then here goes this other person that uses this person to fund the deal. And I really, I thought at that point, I thought to myself, man, I could have really, I could have paid myself the assignment fee, paid the guy, and kept the house if I just knew any better, if I was just even thinking in this manner. And and that's the thing too, because maybe you didn't ask. I I wasn't even thinking that way. I thought like it just seemed like such a foreign concept to me. But that after that deal, I the next day I was raising private money. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> never again yeah. 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 Uh, no. good motivator yeah <laughs> but the thing is that had to happen though for you to know you need oh, to yeah. start using money it had to happen yeah yeah and i'm glad it did because maybe if it wasn't somebody i knew or somebody that had been calling me and that we had been in contact with yeah. maybe I, I i wouldn't think that it was like so obtainable man man that is it we've done yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're like, man, after we did the agreement, we're like, damn, we shouldn't have done this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then make a note of it. And we're like, yeah, moving forward, we're not doing this. So yeah. And it's it's done and we're going to try something else. So so what would you recommend like people do so that they don't make the same mistakes you have? Don't get excited. Don't get excited. Okay. Don't yeah. be impatient. 
just like if it's don't try and force the deal. That's what I, I think, you know, because sometimes they, they want to just make the deal work so bad and it's a bad deal, but they want to get their first deal and they want to get something on the books. And that, I think that's the, the easiest way to get yourself into a bad situation. Um, and, you know, you just got to be patient. And even me right now, like as I'm going through them, I could probably lock up like two, three more contracts every month. But I'm choosing not to because I know they're not good deals. I know that it's not going to work. But I know that me, myself, three years ago would have said, oh, I could I could do all this for you. You know, I would have tried to close it. Because that's the thing, too. And then what would be for anyone who's looking to do rap or whatever exit strategy there is and want private capital? What, in what way would you tell them, hey, do this to find private money? Um. I would say the, the main two things I, I do is you have to be loud on social media and then you have to be loud in your local area, right? Mm -hmm. So if there's meetups here, if there's stuff like that, there's, you should, I, I'm, I, I took this very seriously. I, I like allocated one, one day a week, like, okay, this day, one day, once a week, I'm going to go to a meetup and I'm going to find one private money lender, I'm going to find one cash buyer, and I'm going to find another wholesaler to send me deals. Mm -hmm. And I just, I looked like, I took that, you know, very serious as far as like, a, I even, I like, I was considering it like a money, money, money making activity. I cannot miss this. I have to go. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I think that that's kind of what's making it easier for me to raise the private money also, because I'm a face that they see all the time, right? You could go to the local meetup and you could bump into me. Yeah, no, and I love how you said that. Like, you go there and you know, you're like, this is a money making time. Some mm -hmm. people are like, oh, I gotta go there, I gotta talk to people, and I gotta drive this far, and all that stuff. I love that approach that you take because when you switch how you think your perspective on that event, you're like, go, go, go. This is a work thing. Mm -hmm. You have no choice in order for you to build a list or to raise money or whatever it is. This is what you have to do. So, I love that. And then go in there with purpose. Yeah. Go in there with a purpose. You know, if you just go trying to see, you know, how, I don't know, just high five people, you're not, you know, like, it's not going to go nowhere. So I try to go in there with an intent, you know, like, okay, I, I need to go in there to wholesalers or I'm not leaving. And now you it know. gets to a point that I, I go there just to drink. <laughs> <laughs> but you find, like, in my experience, is that when you go to these meetups, the relationship is built after the meetup. Mm -hmm. When everyone now start, if we're done talking business, let's really get to know each other. Mm -hmm. What are you really doing? And then those little things that like you kind of remember about the person. And then the next time you're like, you know, we should really do some business together. Not just throwing it out there. Like, let's do some deals together. Mm -hmm. After those valuable conversations, you're like, I really want to do a deal with this person. If I ever need anything, I know who to call. So meetups are definitely, I highly recommend those. Mm -hmm. Highly, highly. But Christian, thank you so much for your time, for being here. Guys, if you love this episode, um, like it, comment, subscribe to our channel as well. We, I think... Let's see, Christian and Handle is always in the description, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll put it up on the description. You can follow him at christian.h.1 on Instagram mm -hmm. to see his content and his awesome stories about what he's doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can get examples and start doing it yourself. Doing it. And if you guys have any questions, he would like, he's, he be, he's very responsive on Instagram. Like, you message him, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. He tries to be as responsive. So, so if you know. guys help with anything have deals one of jv with him find him on um instagram his handle as betsy just said is at c-h-r-i-s-t-i-a-n dot h dot one this is especially for my persons all our people who are listening on apple Podcasts or spotify um don't forget just to follow thank you guys for tuning in money mondays is talking about raising private capital using private capital so get ahead and build your business, whatever business it is. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you guys on another episode.